welcome everyone to the April 23rd, 2020 work session of the Henrico County School Board. As you can see, this meeting is being held electronically due to the Commonwealth's current declared state of emergency and Governor Northern's stay-at-home order issued on March 24th and in effect until June 10th, 2020. This meeting is being live streamed on the Henrico County Public Schools website and is also being audio recorded. Notice of today's meeting was provided via a public service announcement on Friday, April the 17th, 2020. I would like to note that the school board is addressing only matters the board considers the essential business of the school division and that all votes will be by roll call and recorded in the minutes. I ask that any board member verbally note if you need to leave the meeting and subsequently verbally note when you return. Board members, do you have any questions about this process? If so, hearing no questions, we'll begin our meeting with a roll call. When I call your name, please verbally indicate your presence. Ms. Atkins. Here. Ms. Consella. Here. Ms. Ogborn. Here. Ms. Shea. Here. Thank you. Please, please let the record reflect that a quorum of the board is present. Next, I'd like to approve the agenda. Can I have a motion um, to approve the agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Mrs. Shea, and it's been seconded by Mrs. Ogborn. I will now do a roll call of the vote. If you agree to accept the agenda as presented, please signify by saying aye. Ms. Atkins? Aye. Ms. Kinsella? Aye. Ms. Ogborn? Aye. Ms. Shea? Aye. And I vote aye. The agenda is approved as presented. Madam Superintendent? Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. The first item I have is related to a status update um, in the COVID-19 crisis and taking a look at um, the current impact and planning that's underway in the school division as it relates to this crisis. And before uh, we dive into that update, I would like to take the opportunity to thank our board um, for their leadership during this incredibly challenging time, as well as to um, share my sincere thanks to the entire Henrico staff for their tireless service to our community. Um, furthermore, to our constituents, our families, uh, want to thank you for your continued patience and support, as well as the input you've provided us um, as we navigate this uncharted territory um, in, in what is not a new normal, but what has become our way of um, dealing with this crisis in emergency operations mode. So, um, you know, certainly I've heard some say, gosh, is this our new normal? And I add that if there's nothing about this circumstance that's normal for our staff, for our students, and for their families. And that is top of mind for us as we work to respond in a manner um, that acknowledges that fact and acknowledges that while we are in emergency operations mode during this mandated closure, we recognize that there is nothing that replaces um, the services that we can provide when we're open when it comes to not only the social, social emotional supports, uh, the connections, the relationships, uh, our school nutrition services, and our instructional services um, in the manner that happens when our buildings are open in those critical um, connections between our staff and our students. So um, in absence of our ability to provide that best service, uh, we continue to do uh, what we can to fill those gaps and create some consistency um, and equity of services for our students. So we're going to have an update now presented by um, our Chief of Staff, Dr. Tigan, and she has worked with the entire leadership team to summarize efforts that are happening on a number of fronts across the division, whether it be related to instruction, to budgets, to, to operations, nutrition, our nursing um, efforts, as well as the impact across our schools and departments. So she's going to share a high level summary that represents, again, the collective efforts of our entire 
um, division leadership team in their response to the COVID-19 crisis. And so I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Teigen now, and then at the conclusion of that presentation, we'll certainly welcome questions um, that cover any number of those categories. So Dr. Teigen, I'll turn it over to you now. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and Dr. Cashwell. I am going to provide an update on the efforts across the school division to support our students, their families, and our staff. Immediately upon the school closure, Henrico County Public Schools embarked on a plan for a continuum for learning for all pre-K through 12 students. The plan, aligned with the VDOE guidance for continuity for learning, was designed in phases to address students' needs and windows of time until schools could formally reopen. The first phase of learning, which occurred from March 13th through spring break, included virtual and distance learning and was meant to take into account critical issues of equity and access. The plan contained online learning for secondary students who had access to laptops and distance learning packets for pre-K through five students. The initial learning plans provided a host of robust virtual and distance learning materials to ensure that all students were provided opportunities and could remain engaged. As Henrico County Public Schools progressed into the second phase of learning, which is where we currently are, teachers began utilizing an updated website, Henrico Edflix, to work hand-in-hand -hand with students through targeted review, enrichment in an application, and recovery for our secondary students. Pre-K through five student experiences are currently centered around review and enrichment through things such as choice boards and performance tasks and engagement through um, with their classroom teachers throughout the week. Teachers and students, they have access to a variety of digital resources that are aligned to standards and engage students in a fun digital content. Beginning in the next few weeks, teachers and students will have access to skills-based printable worksheets and other activities organized by SOL Stream. Learning videos for math and reading, book talks, STEAM video design challenges, learning targets, and video, and video explanations of activities will also be added. In addition to these experiences, beginning on May 4th, teachers will engage students in academic concepts that would have been taught in the fourth quarter. Teachers can utilize all of these resources when connecting with students and supporting their learning experiences. Secondary continues to remain on track with the original timeline for virtual learning in contact with teachers. The EdFlix website includes specifics for middle and high school students and families. There are opportunities for secondary to include support for students to meet graduation requirements, earn standard and locally awarded verified credits, and engage in continued learning to prepare for the 2020-2021 school year. And with exceptional education, our case managers continue to contact families to discuss specific student needs to access all of the virtual lessons and content through the development of temporary learning plans. These plans are not intended to amend the student's current IEP, but are meant to collaborate with parents and students to document and formalize the types of support that are needed and can be provided during the closure of schools. These plans are individualized to the student based on their academic, social, and emotional needs during the period of the school closure. We are also happy to report that our students who are currently served in private day school will continue to receive support and instruction from their teachers and private day programs. The Exceptional Education and Operations Department are collaborating on a distribution plan to ensure our private day students have the necessary electronic devices to engage meaningfully in the instruction provided by their programs. In addition, we are beginning to process in the process of providing services such as speech, occupational therapy, physical therapy, and counseling as outlined in students' IEPs using virtual platforms. Related services providers and counselors who provide these IEP supports will be reaching out to families to gain consent for teleservices during the period of school closure. 
and activities to address individual student social emotional learning skills in alignment with the Henrico Learner Profile are also available for students in the stream, they 12. might be seeing you guys move. Elementary students ha have access to two social emotional learning activities featured on the choice boards with each episode that is released. A more comprehensive matrix of social emotional learning activities is available by grade level and organized by the skill should adults choose to explore additional activities to address needs of their individual children. And secondary students also have access to a variety of social emotional learning activities posted on the Edflix 9 through 12 and presented as a matrix and organized by skill. All activities shared as indicated as independent, adult-led, or partner for easy reference when selecting a task. Later phases of our learning program will occur during the summer months and into the 2020-2021 school year and will provide more targeted chances for students to keep learning and to engage with instructional objectives that prepare them for the next academic year. Our intent is to offer some of these opportunities face-to-face -face, as safety allows in the summer as well as through digital means. We are also planning to be ready to utilize any number of instructional approaches this fall whether purely digital or blend of both, as we know circumstances may change. As for the financial plan, the county manager recommended, <coughs> excuse me, delaying a final vote on the budget until Tuesday, May 12th. That two week delay is designed to give officials more time to explore options for reducing expenses and to allow additional public input at budget feedback at Henrico US. A budget work group has been formed by the county to identify budget efficiencies, and this work group includes both general government employees and Henrico County Public School staff. The school board chair, vice chair, and Henrico County Public School staff continue to work with their counterparts in general government to develop the best financial plan moving forward. In the interim, HCPS continues to hire mission essential staff, for example, teachers and administrators, to fill known vacancies. Dr. Tigan, might I ask you to pause for just a moment um, regarding some of our technical um, situation here. There's a PowerPoint that accompanies her presentation that has um, some items on the screen that may be helpful to our viewing public. So I just wanted to note that that wasn't showing um, should it be possible for us to show that? If not, we can certainly continue um, without that. I'll give a second for Kathy to weigh in. Or I okay, our viewing public can see it, but for some reason we are not seeing it. I just got a note from our folks who are doing the stream, so that's good to know. I just wanted to make sure our viewers um, in the public had access to that because I know it had some some um, items specifically for them. All right, thank you, Dr. Tigan. You can go ahead. I apologize. That's okay. And moving on to operations, technology has been busy this past week. They continue to ensure that every secondary student and all staff have access to the technical support they need to keep their devices up and running. Last Thursday, technology began the distribution of Chromebooks to elementary students. Um, over the course of Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they have distributed nearly 4,000 Chromebooks. They will continue to pro provide hotspots to students and staff members as well. I know that there's currently an order that, is, uh, that we're awaiting. And HEP has been promised $80,000 from Facebook to provide additional hotspots for our students. And these hotspots will include a year of paid services. Maintenance, custodial, and central office personnel worked to prepare Glen Allen High School and provided support services for the Central Virginia All Hazard Incident Management Team's Incident Command Center. The command center has recently gone virtual. However, the school remains ready in case the team needs to physically reconvene. And our maintenance and, soup and custodial personnel continue to open and close the grab and go food preparation sites every day, as well as assisting with building access for um, school, 
school nutrition services to refeed, re, ah, retrieve food from other sites, which are not one of the food distribution sites. The facilities department continues the maintenance and custodial work across the division and has been working on summer projects while the buildings are vacant. And bus drivers have even supported our weekend feeding programs. As we transition into school nutrition, the team has served almost 130,000 meals between March 17th and April 17th. Meals are currently served Monday through Friday at 14 distribution sites. On Fridays, additional meals are provided for the weekend, so they receive not only their Friday breakfast and lunch, but two additional breakfast and lunch for the weekend. The rules surrounding meals has changed since the initial closing of schools. Students no longer need to be with their families when meals are collected. In addition, additional funds are being provided to support the families of our students receiving free and reduced meals. They will be given the maximum benefits allowed for their household size. Some families receive benefits in March and April, and this is to help compensate for students not being in school. These funds are provided to families through the SNAP electronic benefits transfer, or routinely called the EBT card, issued through the Department of Social Services. And that's been great news for our families. As far as community support, in addition to those grab-and-go meals, Henrico County Public Schools has collaborated with the county and the Henrico Education Foundation to complete three weekend distributions of food. This work was led by the Departments of Family Community Engagement and Equity, Diversity, and Opportunity, and they developed a matrix to identify our most vulnerable families. These families were provided weekend food packs as, um, as were local food pantries to be able to continue to serve the community three weeks ago. And then this past week, food boxes were delivered to families in preparation for Ramadan. There's also been a regional approach to meeting the needs of each community's most vulnerable community members, and this work has been supported by our faith communities, local nonprofits, and the Henrico Education Foundation, in our case, the other educational foundation for the other localities. And Henrico Education Foundation has received over $130,000 in gifts, donations, pledges, commitments that are specifically to supply, supply support for our families. An additional $200,000 from Facebook has been um, allocated to support our feeding programs. And there was $100,000 stimulus funding from the Robbins Foundation to support 200 families with their rent, bills, food, basic ex um, living expenses, child care, et cetera. The donations will allow our families to continue to be supported through this pandemic. Um, and we understand that some of this money could be going not only for food boxes, but vouchers to local businesses, as well as supporting those local food banks. School nurses have been another very busy group of staff. Uh, our nurses have been out they, here, there, and everywhere providing support. They have, been, they have supported the efforts of the grab-and-go meal distribution sites. They're providing health screenings for all staff involved with food preparation and distribution. They even help with the passing out of the meals to families. They screened each volunteer and bus driver working to deliver the weekend food boxes. And facility staff also show up at our feeding sites to be screened each day before they head off to their work site. The nurses keep a list of all employees who do not pass their health screening and are sent home to self-isolate for 14 days. The nurses also provided health screenings for the Central Virginia All-Hazard Incident Management Team that was working out at Glen Allen High School. In addition to all of the health screenings, they have screened calls for the Emergency Communications Center, um, which is the 911 call for that's run by the fire department, and the Virginia Department of Health Call Center. They've also been working with employee health and were initially identified as key staff to do COVID testing. Recent decisions to eliminate the COVID testing site and employee health have resulted in the nurses just working in the clinic there. As far as extending what has been happening in other parts of 
just school specific schools or departments our staff and students uh, have played instrumental roles in helping our families and community through this pandemic for example godwin high school center for medical sciences continues to support the emergency operations center with the national and international data mining work that they are doing using social media last week in Rico county public schools worked the county's it worked with the county's it department to create a hotline specifically for questions related to schools we have staff members re responding to calls from 8 to 4 30 seven days a week um, calls really picked up on monday with the distribution of chromebooks so it's been good to be able to answer their questions and connect them with the right people the department of workforce and career development and the teachers and students under the guidance um, of mr baden have been printing face shields for staff and first responders another group of students and their teacher are creating gratitude signs for our long-term care facilities professional learning and leadership has also been involved with um, some other social media initiatives surrounding um, community uh, in, in letting our community know what is happening and helping to keep them abreast of the latest information around COVID. And so with that, I would just want to thank you for the support of all our efforts as we support our students, their families, and our staff. I am so proud to be a part of Henrico County Public Schools. And I know the whole team is standing by. If you have questions, we are we are happy to answer. Thank you, Dr. Tigan. Um, and Chairman, I'll, I'll turn it back to you to help direct us to any questions board members may have. Um, thank you so much, Madam Superintendent. Thank you so much, Dr. Tigan. Um, Dr. Tigan just gave us a um, itemized kind of presentation around instruction, around budget, around operations, nutrition, nursing, as well as schools and departments. And so what I want to do is I want to give each of my, my colleagues an opportunity to ask either uh, Dr. Castro or Dr. Tigan uh, any questions or comments pertaining to each of those items that she has um, expressed to us today. I'm going to start with Ms. Atkins. Ms. Atkins, do you have any questions or comments related to COVID-19? I do. I had to take myself off of mute. Thank yes. you. Mm -hmm. um, so first and foremost, um, I want to say good afternoon, everyone. And I am so glad that you are here. Uh, I, I'm going to ask also, if you haven't, uh, family and friends and citizens, please grab a pen and paper. This is a lot of information uh, that's being shared, that's been shared so far. And there's more information that will be coming as, as we continue to, to conversate on this phone call. And this meeting may provide you um, with answers to your questions and you wanna make sure that you have pen and paper handy so that you can certainly uh, jot some things down. I am gonna actually start with the opening statement and then I am going to respond uh, primarily around the topic of instruction. And, and so I just wanna say that, you know, sometimes we have to go through storms, whether it's storms of busyness or a storm of isolation before we can kind of get to that rainbow. And I understand many of the challenges. I won't say that I know uh, what you're going through um, because those are, are your shoes to fill and figure out. But I can say that I do understand. And I want you to know those challenges of whether it's anxiety, um, feeling isolated, but know that you're not alone in your isolation and, and feeling overwhelmed. And sort of when that rainbow appears and then when we're able to get back to hugging each other, I want you to know that there will be nothing you wear for me that's going to be more noticeable than your smile. And I can't wait to greet you with my smile too. So I just want to make sure that I'm always sort of starting with a level of hope. Uh, for all of us because we will get through this. And so I will uh, go ahead and move on to um, letting folks know that I want to hear from you. I want to hear from the communities that are around the school. I want to hear from the staff that's within the school. 
I want to know how you're, you're dealing with this. I want to hear solutions and your, your recommendations as we move forward, again, towards that rainbow and towards that time when we can hug one another. Regarding uh, instruction, I want to thank Dr. Castro for all you're doing during this time. I want to thank uh, the staff for Henrico County Public Schools for all the effort all the uh, sleepless nights that you've had. I want you to know that I'm, I'm really appreciative of all of the effort. I know that uh, family and, and friends, when we're thinking about all of the information that we have received, it may be hard to absorb. So know that you can go to our HCPS website to see if you can find answers to your questions there. Know that you can reach out to your teachers, your principals, your guidance counselors, me, my other colleagues as well, as we all are, are learning together. We really are. And we're going to learn what we need to, to move forward. So I want you to know that around instruction. Also, family and friends, everyone listening, learning poverty is a real thing. And if you don't know what that means, learning poverty is defined as children who are unable to read by the age of 10. Please, please make sure that our children, I look at your child as my child too, make sure that they're reading. At least Monday through Friday, you can give them the weekend off. But we need our kids to read every single day. Reading helps the brain grow by feeding it information and information really is power. Please don't take power away from your child by not pushing them to read. And so with that, I want to say in closing that, you know, in times of crisis, it can bring out the best of an individual or it can bring out the worst of an individual. And I'm so proud to be a part of Henrico County Public School System because it is bringing out the very best. Chairman Cooper, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Atkins. Um, next, we're going to ask Ms. Kinsella. Ms. Kinsella, do you have any questions or comments concerning COVID-19? Yes, I do. I, I thought, um, I want to ask Ms. Atkins if she thought she was only addressing instruction first. Yes, I was only addressing instruction. I believe aren't we going to sort of go down the road of different topics, or do we nope. address everything at one time? Right, we're going to go down the road of topics one at a time. Okay, one. It is one at a time. Okay, I wanted to make sure um, that it was one at a time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I too would like to start off by thanking everyone uh, in Henrico schools and in our communities uh, for their continued dedication, support, and feedback during this time. I also want to encourage um, feedback going forward. Uh, as we go through this together, we'll learn, we're learning that there are things we could do better, and we're learning that from you. So please continue, whether you're giving your feedback to your principal, your counselor, um, school board members, wherever your feedback is going, know that we're listening and we're adapting um, and trying to make things better for you. As to instruction, um, most of the feedback I've heard relates to the secondary level and high school credit courses for middle school and high school students. Um, with the recovery period so, coming to an end tomorrow, uh, I'd like to see continued messaging focusing on the importance of the next phase of learning and how it is required and no longer optional. Um, but I do have a question uh, about the recovery period material. Is there an extended time period for our students who may need extended time for their 504s or IEPs? Mrs. Kinsella, thank you for your question. I certainly noted um, your request related to increasing communication as we transition from the recovery period into the next phase. And I would, um, I believe Dr. Hughes is here with us, um, and she will certainly be happy to address your questions as they relate to the recovery period um, and or students who may have um, needs for extensions. Dr. Hughes? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yes, I was making sure I unmuted myself. So yes, the answer to your question is absolutely yes. We obviously 
um, have the recovery window in place so that we are hopeful that um, most of our students will be able to meet that goal during that time, but we know for various situations, whether it be, um, you know, diverse student needs or whether families have um, situations where we might need to extend students' times, we will certainly do that. Um, we've asked teachers to uh, keep a pulse on um, student need and communicate that with their um, counselors and their school administrators and obviously those uh, level directors in the Department of School Leadership. And we will work with families on an individual basis to um, make sure that students who need extra time, for whatever reason, that we work with them to ensure that they have that. Great, thank you. Thank you for confirming the individual approach there uh, with our families as so may need it. Um, I appreciate you addressing that. My next question goes to you, Dr. Cashwell. Um, one of the things I've heard about from, from some staff members um, who may not have had an opportunity to download their personal printer drivers before they left schools, as well as um, hearing from some parents who are somewhat frustrated by the ability to not be able to print from their child's school computer. Um, but yet, we, I've tried to highlight how there is a workaround, uh, either uh, via Google Drive or saving the uh, work to a USB drive and then printing to an alternate device. If you could please just update folks on, um, especially our teachers, how this process may work going yes. forward. Absolutely. Thank you, Mrs. Kinsella, and I appreciate you sharing some specific concerns you receive from staff and families related to the issue of printing. And so um, certainly we know that for the most part, staff were able to um, have their devices situated, their school devices situated in a manner that they'd be able to print from home prior to the closure. But in cases where that didn't happen, um, we are preparing ourselves to be able to assist staff with that. Um, hopefully at our mobile technology hubs, we want to make sure that before we direct staff there, we have staff at our um, technology hubs who have the admin rights to do that. And so um, as soon as we develop a schedule that's consistent for that kind of staffing, we all advertise that to staff. In the meantime, I would say if there's any staff member who's having a dilemma with that very um, issue, please don't hesitate to reach out to us, whether it's through your principal or directly to uh, through one of our hotlines or to our technology staff so that we may be able to assist staff members um, in a more expedited fashion than through our um, staffing our tech tech hubs, but that is to come because we know that not only uh, with printers, there may, there may be other issues that come up and we want to make sure we have the best support uh, possible through those tech um, assistance hubs. And as for the families, um, if there are students who want to be able to print items at home, um, you could certainly save those items into your Google Drive and then access the Google Drive through a home computer and print. While I know that um, may present some challenges as well, um, there is a workaround. And so while uh, um, we have really provided a lot of activities that don't require printing, I know that there are cases when that is advantageous. And so uh, we want to be able to help our families with that. And so students, I would say, if you run into any issues with not being able to have a printed document, please make your teacher aware um, and we'll work together to try to find a solution that'll meet your needs. Thank you so much, Dr. Cashwell. Reverend Cooper, that's all I have regarding instruction at this time. Thank you so much, Mrs. Kinsella. Thank you, Dr. Hughes, as well. Um, next, I'm going to call upon Ms. Ogburn. Ms. Ogburn? Thank you, Reverend Cooper. Um, first of all, um, I'm going to echo what uh, Alicia and Christy have already said of, of our great appreciation for the work of the staff. It is, has been amazing to, to be a part of and to watch them be so creative. And so my, my first um, comment is on Edflix. We've gotten tremendous amount of response on the effectiveness of it. You know, Ms. Dr. Cashwell shared with us today a teacher uh, and her appreciation for the flexibility of it. So kudos to the staff for creating something that other people are watching what we're doing and emulating. Um, but I, I also want to express that we have heard some parents where that platform didn't really work for them or they had trouble with it. And the staff has been incredibly responsive to their needs and meeting the needs of students has been their top priority. So I, and adding additional com content, which we're in the middle of doing, I, I think has been 
well received and greatly appreciated by parents because not one size fits all, one plan fits everybody. Um, but also I wanted to, Christy said she'd been hearing more about the secondary level. I've been hearing more from elementary parents and I think we're addressing those needs by adding content to um, Edflix and the, I think that's, that's just gonna improve as time goes on. Um, I do have a quick question about how, you know, um, Amy said something about, you know, getting back with your teacher and your principal. Are we finding that um, parents feel comfortable and are able to communicate with their teachers and principals in, in an hour of need or where something's not working for them? Have we had any glitches with just the communication piece? Well, I certainly um, don't know of any specific issues where there's been a breakdown, but I know that, um, you know, certainly our school administrators and our teachers are trying to bridge the gap in some cases where they just may not have heard from students or families. So teachers who have students who haven't logged on to Zoom calls since the closure or um, who they haven't been able to get in touch with um, via some of the emails uh, that have been sent out, I know that they're making every effort to reach out and have those one-on-one -on -one communications so that if there is some something awry that they can um, address that. But I would just, again, encourage our families, you know, to reach as they always would during a time when our schools are open to their um, classroom teacher, to their counselors that may have been working with their students, and to their building principal. But certainly um, the addition of the hotlines at the division level, um, I hope, add another layer of communication beyond email for um, families who may want to call in and ask some specific questions and we have a dedicated team ready to take those calls and certainly um, direct any family members to to the um, staff members who have the expertise to best answer their questions. So uh, we'll continue to make sure we're keeping those um, lines of communication open and um, throughout this situation. Um, could you give us an update on where we are on the distribution of crime books and um, I know that we have a few requests. Um, Ms. Atkins um, shared that for more hot spots and, mm -hmm. and how we're putting the technology that people need in the hands of people who need it. Yeah, when we initially surveyed our elementary um, families, we recognized the need of at, at least 6,000 devices to bridge the access gap just at the elementary level alone. Um, and so, and, and that's not necessarily putting a device into the hands of el every elementary student individually, but for families who indicated they didn't already have at least one laptop at home for students to work on. So um, we are about 4,000 laptops into the distribution. That's what we distributed to date, and we have several distribution dates ahead of us um, through the remainder of this week and into next week. So. Um, we still have a number of devices yet to deploy and, um, you know, if there are situations where families may not have been able to make it to one of our distribution hubs or sites um, and schools are communicating, our elementary principals are communicating directly to their school communities related to how that this, those um, in need can get this device. But we will certainly um, stay tuned to making any arrangements or, um, you know, addressing specific circumstances as they arise. Um, the hotspots, uh, we actually, our initial um, uh, hotspot inventory was about 400 and we just distributed the last one. So um, a while back we recognized we may have need for additional beyond the 400 and have placed an order for those and they're expected in in the coming weeks and certainly we know that there still are some families who are going to have Wi-Fi access needs and so as um, we've been, schools have been keeping record of that and so is our technology staff so that as these Wi-Fi hotspots become available, we'll be able to uh, let families know and get them into their hands. Okay, thank you so much. I have one last question regarding instruction and that's with our private day placements. Um, Dr. Teigen uh, referred to that. And if you could just, I know this is a change in our initial thinking, if you could just bring us up to date on how we went from being unsure about private day placement down to uh, covering those costs and making sure that those um, schools are working with our, our students. Sure, so I think, you know, as it was initially communicated um, in the closure that, you know, uh, private day schools should um, 
communicate with Henrico County Public Schools related to their ability to serve students during this time of closure um, and determining whether or not we would continue those services with them. And so um, we also wanted to make sure that we were moving in a, in a manner that as we move forward with instruction, that was at all levels. So um, I would also add that in Henrico County, our um, CSA funds are with the Department of Social Services with Henrico County government. And so as we make decisions on how to move forward with um, CSA, that's in conjunction with our partners um, in DSS and in Henrico County government. So um, I think, uh, you know, there's been some recent communication with our private day providers to reiterate um, First of all, how much we appreciate their services and their partnership to serve our students who um, need those services and um, our commitment to making sure that students can continue to receive those services and what we understand will be a different manner, just as is the case with um, our students in Henrico County Public Schools during the closure. So um, we are in the process of receiving um, information from our private day providers related to how they'll um, provide services virtually and um, working on a plan for moving forward um, that allows them to receive payment and continue to serve our students. I'm so um, you know, pleased again with the services that our private day providers have always provided for the community and, and they're certainly an integral part. Thank you so much. That's all I have. Thank you so much, Mrs. Ogborn. Um, next, Mrs. Shea, would you have some questions, comments around instruction? Yeah, thank you, Reverend Cooper. Um, I want to start by echoing the sentiments of my colleagues um, that I'm truly appreciative to our staff um, and all the innovative and many ways that y'all have come up with um, to fill gaps. It's, um, it's truly amazing, and I thank you for all of your hard work. Um, like Mrs. Auburn, the majority of feedback I've gotten on instruction plan um, centers around elementary school, and I've heard from a lot of families that are really appreciative and it's really working for their family. Um, and I've heard from some families that are looking for some additional structure. Um, and so Dr. Ty again referenced that there will be some skills-based um, learning worksheets in the coming weeks. Um, can you give me a time frame um, of when we think those will be available to our families? And Dr. Hughes, I'm going to toss that question to you because I know your team is, is working on the logistics for making additions to the learning platform. Yes, absolutely. So beginning Monday, which is the 27th, um, there will be another window, if you will, or a button on the Edflix site for each grade level. And one of the buttons will be called learning and practice. And that is certainly something that we are encouraging the teachers to utilize when they um, do their sessions with students. And I think the, um, in response to the community's um, ask, those, um, what they'll find in, in, under that section will be specific opportunities, practice, um, centered around SOLs where they'll have more, um, the, the instruction will look more um, packet based and worksheet based and it will again be something that teachers can use with the students but that students can certainly um, use independently to practice throughout the week and all geared around SOLs that would have been covered um, throughout the school year. So I'm hoping that that um, addition will meet the needs of some of the families who have asked for more structure. It's uh, definitely a different look and feel from the um, performance-based assessments in the choice menu and much more geared to independent practice um, and review. Thank you, Dr. Hughes. Um, also, I just want to uh, echo Ms. Ogburn's sentiments and um, I'm appreciative of the work done to amend the private day school um, in order for those students to continue receiving services. Um, for our special education families, for those families, particularly with students with um, an IP or 504 or even our English language learner students, um, if they feel like they need additional supports, um, who should they reach out to and how should they go about that? I'll provide a high level answer to that. I mean, they, you know, and, and Dr. Hughes, stand by because I'm going to pass it to you next. But certainly, you know, um, as would be the case during um, even times when we were meeting face to face in a school, you know, the, the school, the 
assigned um, case managers, assigned teachers, um, and the administrators at any um, individual student school are going to be the best point of contact for working through um, what additional supports or resources might look like. But um, I can certainly pass it over to Dr. Hughes, who can speak to that some more. Um, yes, absolutely. And, and Dr. Cashwell, you're um, right on point. You know, for our students who have um, 504s or IEPs, we've asked their case managers um, to reach out to families uh, multiple times a week to ensure um, that the students have what they need and to also provide direction for, especially for our students that aren't um, accessing the general curriculum right now and who might need more of a specially designed instruction. Um, as far as our English language learners, our English um, language teachers have been reaching out to students and families um, when we're not able to get in touch with somebody, then certainly we've, um, you know, gone through our schools, reached out to counselors. We have social workers who can reach out to families for us. We're trying to make sure that we keep a pulse on everyone, knowing that right now some, some families aren't able to access the learning, but we want to make sure that we've made diligent efforts to reach out to the students to ensure that they have the tools that they need right now to access learning if they're able. Thank you so much. That's all my questions uh, about instruction. Thank you so much, Ms. Shea. Thank you, Dr. Hughes, for your input and for your explanation. Um, next, we want to move toward um, the budget. Uh, questions related to or concerns about the budget in the context of COVID-19. I'm going to start with Mrs. Atkins. Thank you, Chairman Cooper. I do not have uh, feedback at this point, but I do have uh, a question. I do know that, um, you know, our Henrico County partners certainly are uh, offering several different methods uh, to provide feedback and to, you know, make sure that they are as transparent as possible around um, what's happening with the budget and possible next steps. I think uh, as a collective board, we want to make sure that we are doing all that we can to be transparent. Uh, Amy or Dr. Cashwell, my question really is for you. Once we get to a place where we are more in a, a final state of, of what's going to happen with budget, what are some of the best ways that um, you feel uh, that we can offer? And then, of course, I know as a collective board, we'll discuss this, but I, I'd like for folks to understand that we will do our best to be transparent around budget and uh, sharing some of that information out. The number one uh, some of the feedback that I'm hearing is, well, I know you guys are going to send an email. What are some other ways that we can stay informed? Well, certainly, as you indicated, uh, Mrs. Atkins, right now in the budget process, um, as you know, you'll you'll recall, we previously, as a board, adopted a budget which was sent over um, to the consideration of our folks at county government, and since this. Um, the financial uh, picture has changed drastically. Um, the, the county has, uh, the, the county manager has amended the approach to the budget. And so while we were given some direction related to our current uh, budget year, and of course we've shared some of that with staff, we are um, continuing to work in collaboration to determine um, what budgets, uh, changes or amendments will need to be made going into the next fiscal year and so we'll certainly um you know as you alluded to there's um an input process going on uh, with the community right now and that does involve also some henrico county staff and um so while certainly staff are able to receive that feedback i know that there there may be a manner in which that's going to be shared more publicly um, and i'd have to defer to those organizing that effort on the county government side but I would say that we're going to continue to use every method we can to communicate um, to our stakeholders and to our community going forward any um, potential impacts that might be um, coming their way related to the budget and just what it means for the overall picture uh, of the financial health and well-being of Henrico County Schools as we navigate the crisis and, and, and what our strategies are um, to deal with that going forward. So we certainly understand, as you pointed out, communication is key. And so we'll continue to do um, all we can to um, communicate any decisions going forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Atkins. Uh, next, we're going to turn it to Ms. Consella. Ms. Consella, questions or comments related to the budget? 
Yes, thank you, Reverend Cooper. I'd like to just um, make a few comments about the budget. Um, I, I'm just extremely disappointed to see um, cuts to our school budget, um, especially since we never recovered um, from the recession of 2008. I would just like to express that I support our unwavering um, commitment to job preservation, both on the government side and on the school side. Um, and I'd just like to encourage uh, those working on the budget with us to just remember the student supports and how important they are. Um, I'd also like to thank our leadership, teachers, staff, community members for all the feedback and support and to continue um, to give us feedback while we go through this unprecedented budget revision process. Um, I would also like to state that as soon as physically possible and as soon as it's fiscally responsible to do so, I would like to see budget appropriations added back with an emphasis on um, school counselors, reading specialists, and resources because I think our, not, our students will need these supports now more than ever. So, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Gonzalo. Thank Mrs. you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Consola. Next, we're going to ask Ms. Ogborn. Ms. Ogborn, any questions or comments concerning uh, just, just a quick one. I um, echo what uh, Alicia and Christy have already said, that um, it is disappointing, and it's a disappointing time. And um, I know our uh, county leaders feel the same, that having a $100 million projected shortfall in the budget is a bitter and hard pill to swallow. And, you know, schools stand ready and and willing to do our part to help our counties overall health in, the, in a financial crisis. And I think Reverend Cooper and I have had the um, ability to work with the chair and vice chair of the Board of Supervisors, and I think we're well on our way to coming up with a proposal uh, with the input of our board um, to, to find a way forward where we're doing exactly what Christy said, which is projecting protecting our teachers and staff jobs and um, hopefully you know we'll, there's a light at the end of the tunnel where this too will pass and the commitment from the county is that as soon as possible funding will be restored and and i couldn't agree with christy more that we we put those efforts when funding is restored in teacher supports guidance counselors and student supports because they are going to need it more than ever it, it is a tough time but, um, you know, we will get through it, and I, I think we will get through it um, probably a little stronger, And um, but I, I know it is going to be painful. Every cut that we have to make will be, will be difficult, and, um, but I know our, our staff is up to the task, and they always do rise to the challenge, but that, I just know we have, it's, it's going to be rough sailing for a while, but, um, but I know I so appreciate Dr. Cashwell's leadership through this and, and that of Chris Sorensen. It has um, been invaluable. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Ogburn. Um, next, Mrs. Uh, Shea. Any questions or comments concerning the budget? Yes, I have a few comments. Thank you, Reverend Cooper. Uh, like my colleagues, I find it really hard to swallow um, losing our big wins from the new budget, um, particularly our 40 elementary school counselors, our reading specialists, um, as well as protections for teacher planning and more. Um, however, I do appreciate the considerations to include school-based staff members in the budget work group. Um, so often, boots on the ground can provide um, really important insight on um, what funding cuts and funding changes look like when they get to our students. Um, I as well want to thank the chair, the chairman, the vice chair, um, and the superintendent for advocating for our school funding. Um, and I can say that they are leaving no stone unturned looking for places to stay funds. That's all. Thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Shea. I really appreciate those comments from all of our peers. Um, next, we want to move down to operations uh, concerning um, COVID-19 questions or comments. Um, I'm going to begin um, with Ms. Atkins. Ms. Atkins, do you have any comments or questions concerning operations related to COVID-19? Chairman Cooper, I do not have any at this time. Thank you so much, Ms. Atkins. Next, we're going to reach, reach out to Ms. Kinsella. Ms. Kinsella? 
Um, yes, thank you so much. I do, I do have a few comments, and then I also have a request to Dr. Cashwell. Um, I'm particularly worried about our food insecurity and other community needs um, in our county. Um, I'm hearing the nutrition need is actually much greater in the Brooklyn district than anticipated. I'm sure we're seeing that throughout Henrico County, um, but I'm hearing that specifically to the Brooklyn district. And while I appreciate the updates the board has received, I would like to ask Dr. Cashwell if she would um, ensure even more detailed reporting goes out to the board regarding grab and go updates as well as other resource di distribution efforts. Um, I feel like the longer this crisis goes on, the needs in our communities will only increase. Um, and since we can't safely be out in our communities during this time, um, you're our point of information on this. And I'd like to stay in tune as I'm sure my fellow board members would with the needs of their district. So thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Consell. That request is noted related to some more detailed and frequent information, not just about our school nutrition program, which would be what does the grab and go, but also some of those partner endeavors with our um, folks on county government, whether it be um, DSS or other entities to fill in the remaining nutritional gaps. Um, and as well as those with our community partners. And I know Dr. Tigan alluded to some of the efforts with the Henrico Education Foundation and other donors who have specifically earmarked funds for um, meeting some of the food insecurity needs. You, I think you're right. These needs will only continue to grow as families continue to endure um, some financial hardships in, in a manner they've never um, experienced before. So we certainly want to be responsive to that and understand that the board would like to keep in tune with how those needs are changing over time. Thank you so much, Ms. Consella. Thank you, Dr. Castro, for your response. Next, I'm going to ask Ms. Ogburn. Ms. Ogburn, do you have any questions concerning operations uh, pertaining to COVID-19 or comments? Ms. Ogborn? I'm sorry, I was muted. Yes, yes okay. Do you have any questions, Madam, concerns around uh, operations? Uh, no, just a, a, a statement of appreciation to all the folks who are out there um, getting it done every day and delivering meals. It's been amazing to watch, but no, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ogborn. Ms. Shea? Thank you. I have one um, quick question concerning the Chromebooks. Um, do we know, are those Chromebooks, I've heard mixed reviews from some families, are our school issued Chromebooks um, formatted to be able to access Zoom calls? I'm going to jump in and answer that and, and if there's uh, someone uh, involved in the meeting here who can provide more detail, whether it be Mr. Pritchard or Dr. Hughes, I would say please chime in, but it's my understanding that they're doing a push related to Zoom and being able to access Zoom um, so that Chromebooks that haven't been able to have success with that platform will be able to do so. Um, I would make a side note that as we um, initially moved into what I, I'm saying is this emergency phase of responding to instructional needs in a manner that's distant, we certainly wanted our teachers to be able to leverage a number of platforms, whether it's Google Hangouts or um, Zoom, or they're leveraging any number of platforms that may work for them. Um, some are using the big blue button in Schoology, which is a platform the school division um, uses as a learning management system. But we want to make sure that safety concerns are being um, taken into consideration and addressed. So we're doing some work centrally to make sure that we're able to um, give the best recommendation uh, regarding internet safety to our families and to our teachers. And so um, while we'll allow that access to Zoom through the Chromebooks um, in the immediate future, I would um, suspect that as we move into the coming months, we may be uh, making some specific recommendations as to the HTTPS platform we'd like to see this sort of virtual um, communication happening in so that we can make sure that um, it, it's um, the safest manner possible. Thank you, Dr. Cashwell, and I really appreciate your considerations for our student safety um, and cybersecurity. I know we've seen um, that go awry at quite a few school divisions, and so I really appreciate um, your attention there. 
Um, since my other colleagues looped in on school nutrition, I'll just loop in and say our school nutrition workers are rock stars. And I was able to be out there with them a few days at the beginning. Um, and they are cranking out meals. They are positive. They are excited to see our families. And our families are really appreciative. And I am really appreciative for our school nutrition workers and our nurses who are screening um, our workers and our volunteers and helping out. Um, you are really filling a gap in the community um, every day. And so um, thank you to all our school nutrition workers. Um, you're, you are, you're amazing. Uh, and that's you. all I have. Thank you, Ms. Shea. Um, before I move on any further, I want to again remind all of our listeners, um, those tuning in, that you can always go to our website um, to receive up-to-date um, information pertaining to COVID-19. So please always um, use that as a resource, and as a clearinghouse um, in regards to information disseminated pertaining to COVID-19. Dr. Castro, real quick, can you do me a quick favor? Do we have any update um, concerning graduations? Um, I'll be happy to address that. So our high school principals, along with um, the director of high schools and a number of other uh, folks uh, have been working um, to brainstorm ways that we can um, best honor and we do want to honor um, preferably in a manner that's both ceremonious and hopefully face to face the accomplishments of our graduates um, at, at the time that we're safely able to do so. So we initially indicated to our families that we had held our dates at the Sandler Center, uh, or not the Sandler Center, at the Siegel Center, rather, wrong S, uh, to, you know, should any changes occur in relation to um, large group gathering guidelines. But it's becoming more clear that that's likely not the case, but we, we always remain optimistic. Um, so they are looking at contingency plans, um, some, some ways to honor our graduates in the more immediate future, and then potentially what that might look like in some um, some larger group settings, whether they be at the individual school sites or, um, you know, they've been collaborating with colleagues across the region, looking at things like using drive-in movie theaters and other um, unique venues to do things that highlight the graduates but allow social distancing and all of those things. So all this to say um, plans are still in the works and we will communicate any firm plans once um, we've um, made those and would also add just not necessarily with graduations but just celebrating our seniors and, and really all of our students our student athletes and all the other extracurricular um, accomplishments and academic that our students have achieved throughout this school year schools are really doing some unique things leveraging social media doing virtual senior nights um, for anything from drama to chorus to the soccer teams and so our school leaders are really working hard to make sure that they find ways to honor our students who deserve it so very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Castle. We really appreciate that update and look forward to getting more information pertaining to that. Um, last but certainly not, not least, we want to um, be able to answer questions or give comments concerns concerning uh, schools and departments. So I'm going to start with Ms. Atkins. Ms. Atkins, any comments or concerns regarding schools and departments? Um, I do have a comment, but I will chime back um, to give a, just a, a couple comments around nutrition uh, since we introduced that uh, at the last go around. So um, I, I received a, a couple text messages around um, the grab and go meals. And so for those folks, I just want to let you know that for the Verino District, you are looking at uh, going to either Sandston Elementary, Ward Elementary School, Montrose Elementary School, Holland Springs Elementary School, or uh, the Henrico Volunteer Rescue Squad, and that is out in Sandston. So again, you can go to our HCPS website uh, to get additional information, but we do have several grab and go sites here in the Verino District, and uh, meals are served at 11 a.m., and they go through noon. So I just wanted to make sure I responded to that around nutrition. Around schools and departments, particularly around uh, our, our equity department and our family engagement or base uh, departments, I know that they are working around the clock uh, to come up and make sure that families are getting what they need and trying to provide as much help as they can. Something that um, I'd like for us to consider as a board as 
and they are on the front lines also trying to fulfill needs. Um, I'd like to have some sort of uh, campaign or maybe additional uh, communication about their roles and what they're doing um, and highlighting uh, their work because their work is going to continue along with all, coupled with all of our staff, but particularly when we're looking at family engagement, it is such an investment. And this, these two teams that are working together in this crisis, it's been elevated to me that their work really does need sort of a, a bigger understanding of their roles and responsibilities in the community around what they're doing. And so I just wanted to take an opportunity in this particular schools and department category to talk about sharing more of their role and their responsibilities. Because even once we get through COVID, their role and responsibilities are going to grow tremendously, I, I believe. And so I'd like us to do a little bit of research around that. I'd like to do a little bit more communication to share within the communities what they actually do and some of the things that they want to achieve. Thank you, Mrs. Atkins. Absolutely, the efforts um, on those two fronts have just been heroic when it comes to not only the school nutrition needs, but hygiene needs and just plugging um, folks into any number of services um, through county government or otherwise that they may be in need of. And so I think you're right. While we know our family engagement team and equity um, and opportunity team already had some great connections in the community that, and our um, families knew how to access them and leverage the resources, um, this has only multiplied that reach. And so families who may not have had reason to be engaged with some of the opportunities that come through our family engagement folks um, in particular, I hope that now they'll see um, how, um, you know, how important those connections can be and, and maintain those, again, even outside of this crisis, um, whether it's resulting to any impacts um, that come from this crisis or any other needs they have during the school year that um, may be uh, what would have been considered run of the mill before this crisis, but certainly needs that they know that there are these avenues of support. So I hope it certainly shines a light in a wonderful way on the kinds of supports we've always offered, um, but folks may not have known about. So we'll continue to expand and highlight those. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Mrs. Atkins. Uh, next, we're going to ask Ms. Casella, would you have any comments or concerns um, in response to schools and departments for COVID-19? Actually, I do. Thank you, Reverend Cooper. I'd like to echo Ms. Atkins. Um, comments about our equity and diversity department and our face department and how their role and responsibilities has not, they've increased and I believe will continue to do so um, as we go through COVID together. Um, they've done such outstanding work, but I also wanted to highlight the work of every single person that works in Henrico County Schools. And I also want to say that to our teachers, our principals, counselors, whoever is working for, from home for us um, right now, I realize, and I thank you, I realize you did not have any heads up on this and not everyone is cut out to work from home and provide their childcare at the same time. And I thank each of you for what you're doing and to our departments working the front lines of this crisis. I can't thank you enough for what you guys do every day to help support our community. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Consella. Ms. Ogburn, any questions or comments concerning to schools and departments pertaining to COVID-19? Not really. I, I think my colleagues have said it very well. So I'll, I'll say ditto. Okay. Very profound, but very simple at the same time. Yes, ma'am. Um, next, we're going to move to Ms. Shea. Uh, Ms. Shea, would you have any comments concerning schools and departments pertaining to COVID-19? No, sir, no, no comments at this time. Yeah. Profound and simple and short again. Thank you so much. Um, the, the challenge for me being the facilitator of the conversation, I could have all these statements written down, but my, my colleagues ex explore them all. So again, I just want to say how um, humbled and appreciative I am of Dr. Cashwell's leadership um, of our, our division, as well as um, her staff, the team, the central office, all the way down to the person in the building and boots on the ground. Just know that we are truly and tremendously grateful for you. Um, we stand with you um, and we know that together we definitely can make it through this and we're gonna come out better because of it. 
As we transition now to the next item on our agenda, the next item on our agenda is our closed session. The closed session um, is for us to enter into to discuss matters covered under item A1, section 2.2-3711 of the Code of Virginia, as amended pertaining to the assignment, appointment, and performance, disciplining, and release of contract for specific school board employees. Can I have a motion to enter into closed session as well as the second? So moved. It's been moved by Mrs. Shea. Is there a second? Second. It's been seconded by Ms. Kinsella. I will now do the roll call vote. If you are in favor of entering into closed session, please respond by saying aye. Ms. Atkins? Aye. Ms. Ogden? Aye. Ms. Shea? Aye. And I vote aye. The Ms. Ayes have it. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> the ayes have it. We will now go into closed session for our listening and viewing audience. We will reconvene the work session at the conclusion of our closed meeting. We are now into closed session. All right, well, we, we thank everyone for your patience as we navigate these uncharted waters of virtually um, conducting the business of Henrico County Public Schools. Thank our clerk who's actually at um, our uh, headquarters, if you will, making sure that they run smoothly. We want to now um, reconvene um, this work session by certifying our closed session. Can I have a motion to secure um, that certified of our closed session? So moved. It's been moved by Mrs. Ogwin. Can I have a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Atkins. Um, I will now do the roll call vote. If you're in favor, please say aye. Ms. Atkins? Aye. Ms. Kinsella? Aye. Ms. Ogburn? Aye. Ms. Shea? Aye. And I vote aye. The ayes have it. The closed session has been certified. Madam Superintendent? Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. First, I'd like to seek your approval for the appointment of administrative personnel for the 2019-2020 school year. Thank you so much, Madam Superintendent. Um, colleagues, can I please have a motion um, to approve her recommendation? So moved. Then moved by Mrs. Uh, Shea. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Kinsella. I will now do the roll call vote. Ms. Atkins? Aye. Ms. Kinsella? Aye. Ms. Agua? Aye. Ms. Shea? Aye. And I vote aye. The ayes have it. The administrative appointment is approved. Thank you. The board has just approved James Ellis as our new director of pupil transportation. For the next item, I recommend that the school board approve the BSBA Excellence and Workforce Readiness Award application. Colleagues, can I have a motion to approve her recommendation? So moved. Who did that? Was that Ms. Ogborn? Yes. It has been most moved by Ms. Ogborn. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mrs. Atkins. I will now proceed with the roll call vote. Ms. Atkins? Aye. Ms. Kinsella? Aye. Ms. Ogborn? Aye. Ms. Shea? Aye. And I vote aye. The ayes have it. Um, the award application is approved. Thank you. Next, I'm recommending that the school board approved the proposed revisions to Chapter 2 School Board Bylaws of the Henrico County Policies and Regulations Manual. And I entertain a motion to approve the recommendation. Reverend Cooper, can we have just a brief moment of discussion? Yes, ma'am. Um, I will do, I will go down the road and then call you out. Um, Ms. Atkins? Thank you, Chairman Cooper. I do uh, have uh, a couple of comments while we're on the topic of policy. Um, it's not directly with uh, your motion, Dr. Cashwell, but I do want to, since we have the public's attention, let them know that our policies are posted online and you can find them at https colon backslash backslash w-e-b-a-p-p-s dot henrico dot k-12 dot va dot u-s backslash policy 
Um, as a board, I believe we all would welcome you to take a look at it, but I, I have been receiving where can you find it, and I wanted to make sure and that uh, everyone watching knew where the location of the policies are. Also, something else I'll address on, on policy and talking about governance <clears throat> of our actions, know that you can reach out to all of us using our school board email address, which is schoolboard at henrico.k12.va.us. When you send that email, it does come to all of us. And just make a note that our, our Phyllis chair uh, responds to those emails on our behalf. Uh, again, each school board member also has their own individual email address along with uh, our own phone number. And we use this to communicate and disseminate information all of us do this in our own unique ways, and we are guided by these policies. So um, if you have questions around how we're, we're governed and, and our actions, again, HCPS has all these policies outlined um, on our website, and we all have our own unique ways of disseminating information. I will share with you. So you know, if you go back in March, um, I introduced office hours. In April, I distributed my quarterly e-newsletter, and I have received feedback on how can uh, you get on that list. You can simply send me an email, and then again, um, in May, um, I will be having coffee and conversations, which are virtual sessions where I can share more information, and then I can also listen to uh, whatever it is that you want me to know. And so I just wanted to take this opportunity under policies to make sure that I share that information. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Atkins. Um, the discussion right now um, is pertaining specifically to the policies pertaining to the school board bylaws. So um, as we go down, can, um, can you ensure that the conversation kind of stays specific to the agenda item um, as we seek to seek approval of the school board bylaws? And so thank you, Ms. Atkins. Um, next, I'm going to go to Ms. Kinsella. Yes, thank you, Reverend Cooper. I have a question and an ask under Chapter 2. Um, it does not pertain to changing Chapter 2. It's just an, I wanted to discuss procedure during this time as Chapter 2 um, states it. And what I'm going to ask for is going to be different than Chapter 2. Um, under normal circumstances outlined in Chapter 2 of our governance, board members receive updates from the superintendent. And we're actually able to engage with our principals, teachers, staff, and community out in the community and in our schools. But since um, we're not able to do that at this time, um, and I feel like so much is already on our principal's plate in terms of trying to communicate and get updates with them, um, what I'd like to ask for is if it would be possible for me, because I feel like I'm missing things in the Brooklyn district, that are going on. Um, just nutrition was an example listed earlier. I'd like to see if it would be possible to schedule a meeting with an elementary, middle, and high school directors, whether it's already, whether it's an already scheduled meeting or whether I can have one scheduled specifically to provide me with an update um, on things I feel like I'm missing or not hearing about during this time. Um, since I know our both communicate with their directors at least once a week during this time. So that's what I'm asking for is to have a, have a meeting with directors during this time, which is different than Chapter 2 and how we would normally operate. Dr. Cashwell. Mrs. Kinsella, your request has been heard and certainly um, would want to extend um, any arrangement um, to all board members related to having some dialogue, whether it be with the directors or certainly submitting um, questions, or I can certainly get an update through the directors to pass on to you all individually as it relates to your district or collectively to the board. So if I might have some time to propose some logistics related to your concern, but I hear you and I will, um, if, if given the opportunity, provide you with some options for how that might work and assume that each board member may want to take advantage of a similar opportunity. Thank you so much, Dr. Cashwell. Reverend Cooper, that's all for me. Thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. Uh, yes, I do. Um, 
as you all know, uh, Ms. Kinsella and I sit on a committee uh, looking at the bylaws and um, Chapter 2 specifically is where we've started our work. And I just wanted to make note that on page 29 of this chapter, um, there is a discussion of public forum. And um, we are updating that section, um, not extensively, but substantially. And I just want it noted that we're public about this, that we are changing our timing for uh, public forum from four minutes to three minutes. We have found that as of late, um, that has been necessary due to the overwhelming response we're getting from the, uh, from the public on lots of different topics. And so um, in this chapter, provided that we approve it, we will be permanently changing that public forum time to three minutes. Um, and But it's also noted in this section of the policy, and this came up about our meeting today, is that public forum is held expressly and um, singularly during our monthly meeting, which for tonight has been canceled. And so there was a lot of discussion this week from the public um, noting that public forum was canceled. Well, that's not really accurate. Our public forum for this month was canceled because our night meeting was canceled. And so um, based on feedback from the public, we did add today um, our ability for people to uh, email in, which they have done and we appreciate. But um, we do in this section of chapter two have the option to adjust. And so that's obviously what we've done today. And it's an important thing for people to realize that if this is three minutes and or as prescribed by the board and we can adjust public forums. So I think actually this section, the way it is now written, is much more flexible for us as a board to have public forum during a work session like we are today if we need to. Um, and also adjust that, that timing. So I just want to make sure that, um, that everybody is aware that that is in this uh, chapter two and that it is being adjusted. Thank you so much, Ms. Ogborn. Does that conclude your comments? Yes, it does. Thank you, madam. Um, next, Ms. Shea. I don't have any additional comments. Thank you, Reverend Cooper. Thank you, madam. So that being said, Reverend Cooper, I have one more comment to yes, follow. This is Ms. Kinsella in Brooklyn. I would like to um, uh, emphasize what Ms. Ogburn just said and let uh, our community watching know that we've been working on this policy since January 30th and that the change that she just highlighted about community speaking uh, from four minutes to three minutes has been made available to the public for quite some time. So thank you. Thank That's you. all I have. Thank you for serving on that committee that has been uh, looking on our uh, bylaws. Um, Madam Superintendent, does your, does your request still stand for the approval to the policy revision of Chapter 2? Yes, seeking uh, the board's approval on revisions to the Chapter 2 school board bylaws of the Henrico County Policies and Regulations Manual. Thank you, Madam. Um, our superintendent has made a recommendation. Can I entertain a motion? So moved. Been moved by Mrs. Shea by the second. Second. Seconded by Ms. Kinsella. I will now proceed. Mr. Cooper, hold on. I think that was um, not Mrs. Shea, but uh, Mrs. Auger. Oh, so Ms. Auger, you, you made the motion? Yes, I did. Thank you so much. I, I stand to be corrected. Please forgive me. I'm um, been moved by Mrs. Auger and seconded by Mrs. Kinsella. I will now proceed to the roll call vote. Ms. Atkins? Aye. Ms. Kinsella? Aye. Ms. Ogburn? Aye. Ms. Shea? Aye. And I vote aye. The ayes have it. The school board bylaws have been approved. Madam Superintendent? Thank you. Next, I'm recommending that the school board waive the 30-day review period and approve the revisions to policy P4-08. Dash 009, which is personnel and or emergency leave, because the revision in this policy is necessitated by a legislative change related to COVID-19 response. Thank you, Madam Chair. Matt, please entertain a motion. So moved. Been moved by Mrs. Atkins. Can I have a second, please? Second. Seconded by Ms. Kinsella. I now will proceed with the roll call vote. Ms. Atkins? Aye. Ms. Kinsella? Aye. Ms. Agnew? Aye. 
Mache. Aye. And I vote on the ayes have it. The policy revisions are approved. Thank you. Next, I'm recommending the school board waive the 30 day review period and approve the revisions to policy P4 dash 08 dash 016 family and medical leave because of policy revision is necessitated by a legislative change. You all have heard superintendent's recommendation. Can I please entertain a motion? So moved. Been moved by Mrs. Shea. Can I have a second? This is Osborne again. Ms. Osborne, I'm not seeing your mouth move. That's what's killing me. I'm just having an attack. Please sit down. I'm so sorry. It's been moved by Mrs. Osborne. Is there a second? Second. Is that Ms. Kinsella? It is. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Been seconded by Ms. Kinsella. I will now proceed the roll call vote. Ms. Atkins. Aye. Ms. Kinsella. Aye. Ms. Osborne. Aye. Ms. Shea. Aye. And I vote aye. The ayes have it. The policy revisions are approved. Thank you. Next, I'm recommending that the school board adopt a resolution regarding the temporary suspension of school board policies, specifically to coincide with changes that have been made at the state level regarding seat time and graduation. Thank you, Madam Superintendent. Can I please entertain a motion? Can we have a video? Oh, Pastor Kinsella. Okay. Is there some unreadiness? Would you like to have a brief discussion on this? Yes, Dr. Cooper. Okay. So we're going to begin with Mrs. Atkins. Well, I just wanted to touch base. I think that there was some discussion around putting a date stamp on revisiting the decision. And so I wanted to get an update on that. And Mr. Anderson, I believe, made some revisions to that for the board's review. And so I would turn it over to him to any questions you might have. If he's able to answer this. Thank you. So there was a recommendation from Ms. Shea that we add a date for this resolution to be revisited by the board, at which time it could be remanded. It could continue in operation or it could be suspended or rescinded. And so there is a second draft that should have been uploaded to board docs today and available to the public at this point and available to you, of course, in board docs. It's called the Shea Amendment of the resolution. And that adds a provision that just says that basically at the first August meeting of the board, you'll consider whether to keep it in place or adjust it as needed. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Kinsella? Yes. No comment. I'm good. Ms. Osborne? I'm good. Ms. Shea? Could we have counsel just articulate specifically what this resolution suspends for our public watching? Sure. So in normal times, the process for the board is to, when it changes a policy, is to post the change, the proposed change for 30 days and have the public comment on those policies. And then the board adopts it typically at the second reading, at the second meeting 30 days later. During this time, we've had a significant increase in legislative changes, changes from the Virginia Department of Education regarding things like seat time, graduation requirements. We've had federal legislation involving sick leave and those types of things. It's happening so fast, frankly, that we can't keep up with the policies and much of what is being done is temporary. So if we were to follow our normal protocol, we would go find the policies that are affected by whatever the change is, either from VDOE or from federal or state legislation, and change that, post it, wait 30 days, have it approved, and it would be implemented. That's a pretty cumbersome process for what is essentially temporary fixes in most cases, given the current situation. So what this does is says, look, if one of these laws or regulations comes out and changes some requirement, for instance, obviously the seat time and those types of things that for this year need to be modified or credits that need to be modified, to the extent that that impacts or contradicts one of our policies, that policy will be suspended in favor 
of whatever the legislation or regulation or guidance from DOE says. And to be fair, we would follow the law anyway, so we're not really doing anything that we couldn't have done. We would always, of course, whatever the law said that we had to do, we would do, regardless of what we're doing. And so this just is a shortcut to make sure, basically a housekeeping item, to make sure that our policies, if people look at, for instance, a DOE guidance or a superintendent's memo that says one thing and then looks at our policy that says another, it just makes clear that we've suspended our policy to the extent that the DOE guidance or the DOE regulation or waiver applies. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. I just wanted to make it clear to the public that the only things that we're waiving are things that federal or state law would have been in contradiction with our policy. Correct. Federal, state, or state law or guidance. You know, sometimes it's issued, it's happening so fast it comes out as a guidance document from DOE or a superintendent's memo that says, for instance, addresses maybe academic requirements, for instance. And it does give the superintendent the ability, although frankly the superintendent and DLT, since they are the ones who draft regulations, they already have the ability to change regulations anyway. But it just makes clear that they don't have to go through the process of doing that. It's just this will make it automatic, that the regulation will conform to whatever the state guidance or regulation is. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Dr. Cashwell, can I make a request that we have some sort of public-facing document that lists the policies that are affected as it occurs? So I know right now we have two main policies that are affected. We see time of graduation requirements. But in the future, as more are added, I would like that to be transparent for the public to understand what's been suspended. Sure. Request received. We can certainly work on that. Great. Thank you. That's all I have at this time. Mr. Anderson, before you go, how long have you been? Mr. Anderson? Yes. How long have you been the school board attorney? Over seven years at this point. In your seven-year tenure, has there ever been a policy named after a board member? Not that I can recall. At least not in public. Well, Dr. Cashwell, I'm making a request that you do know that you'll get a framed copy of the Shea Amendment and present that to Mrs. Shea, our first meeting. What do you think? I think that can be done. Okay. And to be clear, make sure that if you're making a motion to approve the resolution that Mrs. Shea adopted, that you identify it as the one labeled Shea Amendment, that that's the resolution you're adopting. Yes, sir. I want to definitely do that. It's the Shea Resolution Amendment that we are going to adopt right now based upon the recommendation of our superintendent. Having all discussion transpired, can I please have a motion for approval? So moved. Been moved by Ms. Kinsella. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mrs. Atkins. Yes. We will now have the roll call vote. Ms. Atkins? Aye. Ms. Kinsella? Aye. Ms. Ogden? Aye. Ms. Shea? Aye. And I vote aye. The ayes have it. The policy and divisions are approved. Thank you, Chairman and members of the board. Next, I'm recommending that the school board accept the $10,000 Go Open Virginia mini grant from the department or for the development of openly licensed educational resources from the Virginia Department of Education. You all have heard the recommendation. Can I please entertain a motion? So moved. Been moved by Ms. Ogden. Is there a second? Seconded by Mrs. Shea. Seconded by Mrs. Shea. I now will have the roll call vote. Ms. Atkins? Aye. Ms. Kinsella? Aye. Ms. Ogden? Aye. Ms. Shea? Aye. I'm sorry. And I vote aye as well. The ayes have it. The award is accepted. Thank you. Next, I'm recommending the school board approve the ESSA or school improvement grant funding in the amount of $3,347.39 from the Virginia Department of Education. You all have heard the recommendation. Can I please entertain a motion? So moved. So moved by Mrs. Atkins. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Kinsella. I now will proceed with the roll call vote. Ms. Atkins? Aye. Ms. Kinsella? 
Aye. Ms. Ogre. Aye. Ms. Shea. Aye. And I vote aye. The ayes have it. It's approved. Thank you. Next, I'll be seeking your approval of the annual special education plan for 2020-2021 um, and do have a, a brief um, presentation sharing information related um, to that annual plan for you. And also would add that both Dr. Hughes and um, Donna Stavenport are present to answer any questions you might have prior to um, approving. Are there any questions pertaining to the 2020-2021 special education annual plan? And I that present, and I, yes. I apologize, I think the presentation is queued up and so if we um, have an opportunity to see that presentation and then I'm ready to take questions. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, apologize. Thank you for the opportunity to share with you this afternoon and present you with the annual plan for the use of special education federal grant funds. And I believe the presentation has embedded audio and, and I um, I don't know that you all are hearing it. I know that I'm not and perhaps our viewing public is. The presentation was provided to the special education. So I would ask that um, Donna Stavenport just provide some remarks related to the presentation since we're not hearing that audio and then we'll take questions. Sure, I'm happy to do that. It's really exciting to be a part of um, my first virtual presentation, and I know this is um, the first opportunity that I've had to interact with some of our newest board members. So, um, my name is Donna Stavenport. I'm Director of Exceptional Education for the district, and every year um, I'm responsible for presenting an annual plan for the 6B grant funds that are used to support special education programming throughout our district. Um, this plan has to be presented to our special education advisory committee for, for their approval, their review and approval, and then subsequently to our school board before it can be presented to the state um, for, as an application. So the school, uh, the special education advisory committee had an opportunity to review the plan via email and voiceover and notes um, back in March. And now I am presenting the plan to you all for your approval, for your consideration, and hopefully for your approval. So funding for special education comes from three separate sources. Their federal funds, which are the funds that we're talking about in this presentation, our state funds and our local funds. And you can go to the next slide. As you can see by, by this slide, the vast majority of funding for special education programming in the district comes from local funds. 53% of our, our monies that support students with disabilities are provided by the Henrico County government, with state funding making up an additional 30% of the funding, and then 17% of the funding being from the federal government. And for the purposes of this presentation and what we're talking about today, we are only focusing on that 17% of funds from the federal government. The, the 6 B grant is divided into two components, one being Section 611, which focuses on funding for school-age children, that's for students who are in grades kindergarten through what we affectionately call our super seniors, those students who are 18 years or past their fourth year of high school and then working on those post-secondary transition goals and their IEPs. Um, so that is part 611 of the 6 B grant. The total grant for 611 consists of around $10,182,240. Um, as is appropriate, the majority of the funds that come out of the grant are used to support personnel, those employees who um, provide supports for our students. And the 611 part of the 6B grant supports 90 teachers across the district, as well as multiple instructional assistants. Um, these are teachers that support both special education instruction, um, behavior support, all of those components that go into providing specialized instructional supports for our students. We also use the 6B grant to support contract services and the payment of contract services. In particular, we support our payment for our sign language interpreters that are contracted through um, for providing American Sign Language interpretation through our, for our students through the 6B grant. Um, and then we also use these funds to support materials and supplies for the instruction for our students. 
This can be anything from testing protocols for psychological evaluations and educational evaluations to sensory materials that are used to help outfit different sensory rooms, um, autism specific materials, different educational programs that are evidence-based programs for reading instruction or math instruction for all of our students. A smaller second component of the federal grant is 619, and 619 is for specifically related to those services that are provided through early childhood special education. Um, we have 44 early childhood special education teachers in our district. The grant funds support two of those teachers. And so the majority of the funds from the 619 section of the grant are for personnel services, salary, and benefits. We do set aside a small portion of this grant to, um, to support software that is used for early reading instruction for our students. So once again, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I think it's, it's quite an unprecedented opportunity to be able to share the annual plan presentation with you via this mechanism. I will say that those, we haven't received yet our actual allocations for the grant for the upcoming year. We're always instructed to base our proposal and our grant application on the funds that were received the previous year. So there may be some changes that come once we get the actual allocations from the federal government. However, the purpose behind those allocations will remain the same. I welcome any questions that I can address for you at this time. Thank you so much, Mrs. Davenport, for your presentation. I'm going to start with Ms. Atkins. Thank you, Chairman Cooper. Uh, I want to thank the Special Education Advisory Committee and you as well, uh, Ms. Davenport, for your hard work, first and foremost. We know that special education um, can be complicated, and I'm grateful um, for the work for, of, of you and your team, along with uh, the Special Education Advisory Committee. The information you share specifically is around funding resources, um, and I also want to just uh, ask if you could um, just share with the public that additional information around um, special education as far as an annual report that talks about challenges and opportunities, any response to um, the Ann Holton recommendations, and just let the public know that that information will be shared uh, at some point in the future. But this specifically is around uh, funding resources. Absolutely, Ms. Atkins. This presentation is, is designated solely to the application for those federal grant funds offered under Title 6B. Um, and as always, I welcome the opportunity to provide any additional information that, that the board would like and that the public would like regarding our priorities and the progress that we've made. We typically align those presentations in August and September, along with the Special Education Advisory Committee's annual report. So at that time, I know in the future, I'll be providing additional information about the progress that we've made, our priorities, and, and the things that we're doing to address our program evaluation, as well as our overall goals towards special education. But I'm more than willing to speak at any time that you have questions. Don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thank you. Of course. Ms. Kinsella. Yes, I'd like to thank Ms. Atkins for her comments explaining to those watching um, exactly what we're discussing, that it's the grants and the grant money and how it's allocated to support our students. Um, Ms. Davenport, thank you for the work you're, you and your team do. Um, can you maybe identify or at least let the public know that despite what budget cuts may be coming, that um, the needs um, in exceptional education will still be addressed? Can, can you just give some guidance to that, that, that regardless of how funding or how current upcoming funding decisions may impact um, spending on um, our challenges and solutions? Um, absolutely. And, um, thank you for the opportunity to address that. Of course, we are going to continue to provide for the free appropriate public education for our students, and that's always at the forefront of my decision making as director and our, our department's decision making. And while this 
this application and this grant is really talking about that seventeen percent of funds that come from the federal government we are in constant communication with our budget and finance department and making sure that we're addressing the needs of our students and we'll continue to talk about that moving forward um i haven't had any specific implications about any impact from this um the covid 19 situation with our budget but we will take care of our students we are well versed at figuring out how to maneuver things so that our students are taken care of absolutely thank you so much for that explanation and just reassuring those watching what our priorities are and how in terms of how we support our students thank you that's it reverend cooper thank you so much miss consella miss agua um i don't have anything additional to add i think alicia and uh christy have covered it thank you yes ma'am miss shay i don't have any questions or uh comments about budget allocation i'll just say i'm looking forward to the presentation and update on our progress from the holton report and our priorities um that'll come uh in a few months thank you miss dam what i did have one question can you just give us an example under the 6b 611 uh expenditures what the other charges might be on that 136.72 so other charges um that is an area of the grant that's figured out directly by our finance and budget department it goes along with administrative costs that go um and honestly reverend dr cooper i am not the best person to address that question but those are kind of those other charges as assumed that go along with the administration of the grant so it may be something along the lines of um trying to think how how it's been explained to me before the um the application processes and the um it's 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 the formula that's used in our budget department that says this is the amount that we put toward the grant that says other charges and it has to do with administration but i can look more into that and get a more detailed explanation um, in collaboration with my friends in the budget department to give you a better explanation moving forward i appreciate it i just i just want to know you know 136,000 is a is a, a large amount i just want to know what that might have been so i, I appreciate that and look forward to receiving that Thank you so much. Of course. I'm sorry that I wasn't able to answer it better at this point. I apologize. Thank you. No. You all have, have heard the uh, recommendation of our superintendent. Um, can I please entertain a motion to, to accept her recommendation? And if I might just again um, reiterate that I'm requesting your approval of the annual special education plan flow through 6B section 611 or 611 and 619 school age and preschool grant application. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Can I have a uh, motion, please? So, so okay. Okay, y'all. Two at one time. Okay, that's Ms. Ogborn. I got you this time. It's okay, been, thank you. Well, Ms. Shea, will you second it for me? I'll second it. All right, so it's been moved and properly seconded by Mrs. Ogburn and then seconded by Mrs. Shea. Um, I now will proceed with the roll call vote. Ms. Atkins? Aye. Ms. Consella? Aye. Ms. Ogborn? Aye. Ms. Shea? Aye. I vote aye. The ayes have it. It is accepted. Thank you. Next, I'm recommending that the school board approve the Head Start Transportation waiver request for the 2020-2021 school year. Can I have a motion to receive her, her request? Can I ask you a question about it? Yes, ma'am. All right. Yes. Um, so yes. it looks like, and correct me if I'm wrong, it looks like the components that we're waiving is safety restraints and a bus monitor. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, have we ever had bus monitors for our pre-K buses? Uh, I don't know that I can answer that historically when you say ever, so I'm going to turn that over if I have staff on the line, Dr. Hughes and or um, Mrs. Alsop, are you available to answer questions related to the Head Start transportation waiver? this is a change or anything that would be in recent years but i don't have an historical context beyond um, the previous school year okay are there any other questions before we take the motion and the vote hearing none can i please entertain a motion 
So moved. So moved by Ms. Atkins, there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Kinsella. I now will proceed with the roll call vote. Ms. Atkins? Aye. Ms. Kinsella? Aye. Ms. Ogborn? Aye. Ms. Shea? Aye. And I vote aye. The ayes have it. The motion is carried. Madam Superintendent? Thank you. Next, I'm recommending the school board accept federal grant funding in the amount of $28,004 to provide professional learning for preschool teachers and instructional assistants um, related to Head Start COLA grant funding. Any questions? Hearing none, can I please understand the motion to accept her request? So then moved by Mrs. Shea. Is there a second? Oh, it's Mrs. Ogburn again. Okay, Ms. I'm sorry, Mick, I can't. All right, Ms. Ogburn. Oh, Ms. Shea will second it. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Um, it's been properly moved by Ms. Ogborn, second by Ms. Shea. Um, I'm now proceeding to roll call vote. Uh, Ms. Atkins? Aye. Ms. Kinsella? Aye. Ms. Ogborn? Aye. Ms. Shea? Aye. And I vote aye. The ayes have it. The, the, the request is approved. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Next, I'm recommending that the school board accept federal grant funding in the amount of $55,000 to provide additional support for trauma-informed classrooms related to our federal Head Start quality improvement grant funding. Are there any questions pertaining to this? Ms. Dr. Caswell, um, do you have any idea how these funds will be implemented? I'm really thrilled to see some additional trauma-informed funds, particularly on the heels of this um, crisis. I do not have details about what that professional learning looks like, and I once again offer um, the, the opportunity for Dr. Hughes um, to chime in. And by the way, I don't think we were able to hear her earlier, but she did um, clarify that the request uh, regarding that transportation waiver does indicate um, past practice beyond the last school year, which is what I had knowledge of. So I can confirm that. Um, not hearing from either of them related to exactly what that professional development looks like, but um, it, and it may be somewhere in some of the supporting materials, but I can certainly provide you a breakdown of what that professional development entails because you're certainly right. Um, Trauma-informed care is probably um, always been of critical importance, but now more than ever recognizing that particularly our youngest learners um, at the preschool age will have any number um, of issues that we certainly want to um, work through. And I believe that this training specifically targets the instructional assistants as well as the teachers um, who also serve our students. Thank you. That's helpful. I didn't see that it was um, notated that it was um, professional development. So that gives some context. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Madam Superintendent, will you please uh, restate your request? Yes, I am asking the board to accept federal grant funding in the amount of $55,000 to provide additional support for professional learning for trauma-informed classrooms through the Head Start Quality Improvement Grant Funding. Thank you so much. Uh, can I have a motion? So moved. It's moved by Ms. Kinsella. Is there a second? Second by Ms. Jay. <laughs> Seconded by Mrs. Shea. I see you too, Ms. Ogburn. I see your smile, so it's working. <laughs> um, I will now proceed with the roll call vote. Ms. Atkins? Aye. Ms. Consella? Aye. Ms. Ogborn? Aye. Ms. Shea? Aye. And I vote aye. The ayes have it. The Head Start Quality Improvement Grant funding is accepted. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. For the next item, um, I have a brief uh, comprehensive redistricting update and would certainly um, ask that Mr. Sorensen provide any remarks to where we are in that process and then open up the floor to board members um, should you wish to comment or have questions. Mr. Sorensen? Thanks, Dr. Cashwell. Good afternoon, board members. It's good seeing you guys again, even Ms. Virtual Hoover. It's nice to see you again. So, uh, for redistricting on April 6th, uh, in response to the governor's stay at home order, the school division did announce that we were suspending the redistricting process until a later date when we could re engage with the community. So, uh, as you guys know, we had a great redistricting committee. They worked really hard, uh, produced two, two feasible maps that you now, you now have uh, with you to review. So, when the process resumes, the board will have these options as the basis for the resume process, as well as any updated. Uh, any updated data that may be available at that time. So um, the division will announce a new timeline when it's appropriate, and of course we will share that timeline with the community as well as any new data that we have as we move forward. 
Um, but at this point, we, we do not have a timeline to share with the community. So that's my update, and I'm glad to answer any questions that you have. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Sorensen. So good to see you as well, sir. Thank you and your team for all of your hard work around the district. And we know it's been a heavy load to lift, but you all have lifted it so admirably, and we do say thank you. I'm going to start with Ms. Atkins. Do you have any questions or comments? Uh, first, just no questions, all comment and feedback. So thank you, Mr. Sorensen, for your update. I do want to thank all of the committee members, um, again, just for all of your time and all of your effort for those committee members representing Sanson, Holland Springs, and Lorena, thank you uh, for giving your time to me and our telephone conversations over the past two weeks. Uh, something that, that board members committed to do was reaching out to committee members to listen uh, to their concerns and listen to their solutions as well. And so uh, Lorena district families and those on the committee I have heard you, and I do agree, there are not large impacts uh, to the two maps uh, that we are reviewing, and that, um, you know, the needs more in Verina, Sandston, and Holland Springs are more about resources than moving students in, in my particular district, and I do agree with you. And so I want you to know that you are heard, and I really do agree. So again, Mr. Simonson, thank you for your update. Chairman Cooper, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Mrs. Atkins. Uh, next, Mrs. Kinsella. Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Sorensen, and thank you for your update. Um, as called for at the last minute, I, t I too contacted each of the redistricting committee members for the Brooklyn District. Um, I contacted each one by phone and actually connected directly with all but one who I will continue to try and connect with. I thanked each of them for their volunteerism um, their service to the committee and listen to specific feedback that they had to maps, map options D4 and E4. Um, most of the uh, feedback actually was covered in the redistricting survey uh, done by Mr. Cropper, but they did provide some ex at, um, at additional guidance um, that we I will share with board members whenever we resume um, discussing redistricting. So once again, thank you to everyone um, who served on the committee. So that's all, Reverend Cooper. Thank you so much, Mrs. Consella. Next, Mrs. Ogle. Uh, just a quick uh, thing. I, I too have been reaching out to members of the committee. I've not been quite as successful as Ms. Atkins and Consella at reaching everyone yet, but I will uh, just a little more time. Um, we can notice based on our emails that people are still really um, interested in what we're going to do on this on this redistricting plan. And uh, we, if you all noticed, we got an email earlier just saying, you know, they were nervous about this even being on the agenda today. And um, I think we have a lot of options before us as to how we can proceed. And I just hope we can get to it as soon as possible once we can all meet again. But. For now, yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Ogden. Ms. Shea. Uh, like my colleagues, I've reached out to my committee members and I just um, wholeheartedly thank you, thank them for all of their um, just hours and hours of work on this. Uh, I have been able to debrief with quite a few of my of the Tuckahoe committee members and they've given me um, some really good feedback uh, and possible solutions. Um, to noodle on, so I appreciate um, their efforts there, um, and we'll continue to reach out to the um, members that I have not heard from. Thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Shea. Um, Reverend Cooper, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt, Christy Kinsella, <laughs> if you would please acknowledge that we received all the public feedback, and just acknowledge that quite a bit of it um, was related to redistricting. If we could just thank those folks. I, I, I actually, Katie? I was going to actually, uh, item 9.90 oh. is public forum. Okay. I was actually going to mention there. Okay. Um, regards to feedback. Yeah, no, it's okay, but thank you for, for, for your acknowledgement. So we'll, we'll definitely, I'll speak to it there. Okay, uh, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Madam Superintendent, quick question. To Mrs. Ogborn's point, 
Mr. Sorensen stated that there is no definitive timeline for us to resume um, the work in regards to redistricting. And she spoke about the anxiety and the angst that persons had, if I'm not mistaken, Ms. Ogborn, about seeing it visually on the agenda. Um, so that being said, Madam Superintendent, do we plan to have it on the agenda each time we meet until we are able to pick it back up? Or what's your thoughts around that? Well, I'd certainly defer to the board in regard to what meets your needs, but we added it here to the agenda, um, certainly because this was an opportunity to, again, revisit um, since our last board meeting, the, the board um, did share a public statement in regards to where we stood with uh, redistricting and wanted to have an opportunity to speak to that here um, in this forum. But if there aren't any, um, you know, needs to add it to the agenda for discussion here in the interim, we certainly um, do not need to continue that and can add it again when the board is ready. Um, but again, I defer to what, what, what meets board member needs. Okay, so then therefore, in between now and our next meeting, we'll discuss that as far as whether or not to put it on the agenda if we're not going to do any movement in regards to it, okay? Thank you. I'll, I'll wait for that. Okay, thank you so much, Madam Superintendent. Um, turn it back over to you. All right, thank you. Next um, are consent items, so they can be taken up in a block. And so I am requesting approval of the following, the acceptance of the monthly financial statement and budgetary status report for the month ending in March, or ending March 31, 2020. Also acceptance of the monthly financial statement for school nutrition services for the month ending March 31, 2020, as well as approval of personnel items. Thank you so much, Madam Superintendent. Um, can I please secure a motion and a second for the consent items? So moved. It's been moved by Mrs. Atkins. Can I have a second, please? Second. Ms. Second by Ms. Ogborn. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it's been moved and properly seconded by Mrs. Atkins and Ms. Ogborn that we take as a block the consent items to be approved. Um, I will now proceed with the roll call vote. Ms. Atkins. Aye. Ms. Kinsella. Aye. Ms. Ogborn. Aye. Ms. Shea. Aye. And I vote aye. The ayes have it. The consent items have been approved. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. That concludes items from the superintendent. Thank you so much, Mrs. Madam Superintendent, and your staff for um, all the uh, presentations today. And to Mrs. Kinsella's point, um, our next um, item on our agenda is the public forum. Um, we received at the time of the meeting um, over 50 um, um, public um, comments via um, our school board clerk. So I want to acknowledge that we are in receipt of over 50 public comments, which have been dispensed to each of us. Real quickly, I want to do a roll call to ensure those who are watching and listening that each of you have, in fact, received all of those comments that were forwarded to us by our clerk and assistant clerk. Ms. Atkins, did you receive them? Yes. Ms. Kinsella, did you receive them? Yes, I did. Thank you. Ms. Ogmon, did you receive them? I sure did. Ms. Shea, did you receive them? Yes. And I, too, can say that I received all of the comments and feedback that were shared to us via the necessary communications channel. I want to appreciate our vice chairman, chairwoman, um, the person of Ms. Ogburn, who um, adequately um, conveyed that we were not attempting to disallow for public comments, but under the context of our normally um, held um, work session, we do not have public forum or public comments. But we definitely wanted to um, ensure that the public had an opportunity to specifically and expressly share with us comments and concerns over a myriad of topics. And we want to say thank you as always for your participation, for your dedication as parents, as well as community members. So please know that each of us have our cell phones, our emails. Um, we'd be more than happy at any time to discuss with you anything pertaining to the division because we work for you in regards to our families and our children. So again, thank you so much for your comments, your concerns, and your feedback. That being said, uh, the next item on our agenda is the approval of our minutes. And each of us have had an opportunity to peruse the pages that contain our minutes. That being said, can I secure a motion in a second for the approval of, of minutes? So moved. Been moved by Mrs. Kinsella. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Mrs. Shea. 
All those in favor of approving the minutes, I will go with roll call. Ms. Atkins. Aye. Ms. Gonzalez. Aye. Ms. Agra. Aye. Ms. Shea. Aye. And I vote aye. The ayes have it. The minutes have been approved. Next item on our agenda is unfinished business. Ms. Atkins. I don't have any at this time. Ms. Gonzalez. I don't have any. Thank you. Ms. Agra. None from me. Ms. Shea. None from me. And none from me as well. Next item on our agenda is new business. Ms. Atkins. No new business for me. Ms. Gonzalez. No new business. Thank you. Ms. Agra. I wish we had some new business. Wouldn't that be, we'd all be in a different place. Wouldn't that be, yes. But thank you. No, I don't have any. Thank you, Ms. Agra. Ms. Shea. No new business here. Thank you so much. Next item on our agenda is announcement of our meeting date. The school board's next meeting will be at 2 p.m. virtual work session on May 14, 2020. The meeting time may be adjusted if needed. Again, thank you all for watching and listening. Um, we know that these are trying times, but we do believe that as a result of this, we're going to come out stronger, and better as a community as an, and as a division. That being said, this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you, Reverend Cooper.